Alright, welcome everyone to another replay analysis. Uh, we got this one submitted from Z's Dipwood. Uh, this is a Masters game, so pretty good level. Uh, at least we won't have some stu that many stupid mistakes as we may have in other games, but I'm not here to be mean to the lower league players. Um, so, we got a PVZ. Uh, to start things off, losing that probe is obviously bad not what we want. And also this wall off is kind of bleh. By kinda I mean really terrible. Um wow. Um okay. So we got a huge vulnerable point right here. This is gonna be the biggest target for Baneling busts ever. Um we also don't have a way to can finish this wall off very easily. This second pylon should be here. So that way we can make a cyber core here and leave a small gap here. Uh, here. With this, we're gonna have a cyber core here, and then that this gap that it's gonna leave is gonna be very big. <coughs> and generally not good. Also only getting one gas, uh, we really need a second one. Uh, you should always be double gassing. Unless you're doing some weird, like wonky, like very extremely specific build. Uh, you should be getting double gas at 20. Uh, also, is Chronobus being used? Yes, it is. Okay, that's good. But yeah, this wall is just extremely wonky. Alright, so the cyber core is going to go down. Yeah, so this has got two entrance points. I'm almost positive that you can slip through here and then obviously right there. Alright, so making a zealot. Now getting the second gas. That's obviously late. Uh, Chrono Boost being kept up. Yes, that's good. Alright, so I don't think I should be able to... I don't think I need to be worrying about Chrono Boost that much this game, which is good. Um, Alright, what have we scouted so far? Not much. Uh, we really need to be checking to see if there's a third base uh, by the five minute mark. To see if he's going like normally standard. Oh, wait. We got a second cannon going down. I think he did scout for, us for another base, I think, but it doesn't look like he's gone there. Um, well, either way, it's the right response, since we there is no third base. Uh, I just want to get that secondary cannon down, just in case of any shenaniganry. Uh, warp Gate's not starting yet. We got a Mothership Core extremely quickly, but we can still, we still have money to make these things. Okay, there we go, so that was late. I uh, want to make sure to get on that. So he's going for a Baneling Bust be quite interesting given our wall here. You know, maybe this maybe this is tight right here. <laughs> Even if it is, this is still just like a giant gaping hole right here. <laughs> um and it's bad. <laughs> you should really limit as make it so there's as little uh vulnerable points in your wall as possible, and this is just like a huge vulnerable point. Um, yes, yeah, so you need a lot of force fields to be able to wall this off completely. Uh, militia core should be out like in front a little bit so you can see the units coming uh, ahead of time. Sending it out, uh, this is extremely risky. Um, I understand checking to check for a third base, but uh, still, it's extremely, extremely risky. And even if so, you should go down the, the middle, so that way, because that's where obviously he's going to rally his units most likely, so that way you can just see what's happening as you're going down, uh, and you would be able to see this coming. So you have two sentries out in time. That's a, so this is a really late baneling bust, actually. Uh, if you went like right, like right away for like as quickly as possible a baneling uh, bust. Uh, you would not have had both these sentries out, and it would have been a little bit more hairy, I believe, to defend. So let's see exactly how this goes. So that's a good wall. So, okay, good force fields. And he's for some reason not going to continue. He could definitely break this down, definitely go into the zealot still. Um, oh wow, that's really weird. That's very lucky on your part, actually. He could have easily just switched targets. Even I think he could have even just killed that cyber core, and warp gate wouldn't have finished. But now you have extra force fields. Yeah, he's very just like indecisive and ineffective with these banelings. That's that's very very lucky of you. Um, 
and now you get a whole other warp in, so yeah, you're perfectly fine now. Um, that was very lucky. He, he, he would have... I mean, normally they would just switch targets and just bust through anything anyway, and then flood the lings, and then you won't have anything really to defend it. Um, so yeah, that was actually extremely lucky by you. So, okay. We got Robo Bay coming down. That's alright. Um, the Immortal, I don't really see the purpose of that. Should have really gotten the Observer first so that we can see exactly what he's doing. Because right now we're completely blind. All we know that is he did a failed bailing bust. Um, alright, so the third base is very good. I, I definitely like that idea. Uh, since he just did his aggression for the early game, knowing that now knowing that he won't be able to do any further aggression. So no reason to not take the third. Um, we got we've gotten two tech baths so far, and we have not utilized either of them. Um, so this this is a waste since this is not being used. Well, actually, really they're both being a waste right now since none of them are being used. But you should really stick to one tech path uh, at a time, especially since um, you had to spend so much gas early on on sentries and whatnot to defend. You're not going to have that much uh, left over. Alright, so now we're going to the Colossus, so that's good, but again, it's kind of late. I want to be as efficient as possible and, you know, use, like, right now we're not using this Twilight Council at all. We're not even, we're not using it for, I don't know, okay, so we're using it for plus two. I still feel like we could be getting armor right now, and then a little bit of a later Twilight Council, and then, like, faster Colossus, and then go into, um, plus two. Like, rushing for plus two is really what you would do if you are doing some, like, blink all or something like that. But, um, going one, one, then two is, like, perfectly fine if you're just doing macro. Alright, so a second robo and a dark shrine. What have you seen that makes you do that? Okay, so infestation pit. You also saw the spire, though. That's very, uh... This is this is why I hate Zerg so much. It's so hard to tell. Okay, so you didn't see the hive yet though. So I'm guessing you saw this and then we're thinking, alright, he's going to score most, I need mad colossus. But you should have also seen the spire, which really forces me away from going a second robo, because if he just makes mutas instead and just using this to go to hive, then you're boned. Um I'll see exactly what he does though. Because I don't remember after watching this game a while ago. Alright, so he's actually just going to go Corruptor. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Why isn't he going to host? <laughs> I have no idea. Alright, so the second Robo is a little uh, iffy. And possibly unnecessary since we're not even spending our money uh, appropriately anyway. So Double Forge is nice, I like that. Dark Shrine, uh, never bad to have one of those. Probe Count is a little... Uh, I guess that's okay. We could be up to 7. Yeah, we're, we're fine on probes, actually. Never mind. So we've got a Warp Prism Harass going. Alright, so that's nice. He's going right up to Ultras, so he's not act Yeah, so he's not actually making Swarm Host here. Where's that Warp Prism? Alright, so Hallucinated Phoenix, okay. Warp Prism gonna go in. Are you gonna coordinate this with anything? No. Alright, so usually just warping in a random drop um, is not that good of a thing to do. You usually wanna uh, do it with something, so to either distract or. Well, you wanna use it as a distraction. So you go in and warp in, and then like attack with your main army. Um, since you're going to be guaranteed damage at either point, especially since he sent his entire army, um, you really would have been able to just kill this, or kill this, or do damage here. Probably could have killed these two, this two too. That would have been actually pretty huge if you did that. But yeah, since he sent his whole army to deal with the the, uh, the drop, it's always good to attack or poke while you're doing the drop, so that way you're definitely guaranteed damage. Because right now he didn't; he, those drops did not, that drop did nothing, uh, absolutely nothing. So, I uh, usually want to do uh, both. So, because, e like, either. Okay, so, e sorry, I'm pausing for so much. But either he'll uh, ignore this drop so that way he. Uh, to defend your little push, in which case you're perfectly fine with that. You just back away 
and you're perfectly fine, and then the drop does damage. Or, he completely destroys the drop, but then your push is not uh, uh, defended at all, and you're guaranteed an easy expansion kill, and you can just back away. So it's a win-win. Or if he splits his army up correctly, um, that's always kind of hard though. Especially with when he's going Link Bane and you got Mad Colossus uh, in Force Field. That's kind of a weird, uh, that's, that's difficult for him to split up correctly. So now he's going into Ultras. Have you scouted this yet? Yes, you have. So at this point, we need more Archons, which is good. We need more Immortals. How many Immortals do we have? We only have two. We need more Immortals. And then uh, Void Rays are also nice, but do we have a Stargate? Um, no. But, you know, that's not the biggest deal. Mostly just sell an Immortal Archon. Uh, which you're not making, which is not good. Uh, what are your upgrades at? I remember you had double four, right? Three, one, that's not bad. You should definitely be continuing that, though. Uh, upgrades definitely play a key role when going against Ultra Lists, especially since, you know, they get extra armor with this, uh, that's not it. With this Titanus fighting. Oh, boy, a battle. Oh, no, I didn't minimize the replay bar before. Whoops. Alright, so we got a battle here. Um, this is a lot of stalkers that aren't really going to do that much. Um, just think how many Archons or Zealots this could be, and that would be so much more effective. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be so good. Alright, so you're funneling them very well, this is good, but we need to be force fielding as well. Even though the Ultras are going to trample them, we still want to try to minimize as much uh, movement as possible. And even just force fielding around this edge right here uh, will restrict the Zergling path as well since the Ultras are still not going that way. All of these Lings could be over here right now, and these uh, uh, Claws I would be just doing ridiculous Slash to them. So still no Force Fields. Uh, time Warps, all right, okay. And also there's no Force Fields to keep the Bane Lings away, which is also bad. Do we have Templar? Yes, we do. Do we have Storm? Not enough energy. Wait, no, some of them have do. Some of them do have Storm. Um, I can't actually find them, holy crap. Talk about 1A syndrome. Oh, where the hell are these Templar? Oh my goodness. How do you, like, manage your army like this, man? I can't even find your units. There we go. So we got one, about almost two. One, two, three, almost four. Almost four storms. Like, three or four storms. Um, the mainlings could absolutely die to that really easily. But there is none of that right now. Okay, so force fields go down a little late and already on top of the ultralisks. Which is kind of meh. Alright, so one one storm onto those, that's nice. But there's there is still there's just no micro whatsoever in that at all. Um you really should have blinked back the stalkers. Because those were your most expensive units in that point, except for the Colossus. But um They die pretty quickly to Ultras and Banelings, so you need to blink them out of the way. So that way your Zealots and Archons can come up front and take the damage and deal it. So that way your Stalkers can attack from behind. Um, you just left everything right there and just had it take it. And you just got absolutely everything from it. Um, you need to split up. Staying in a ball like that is not good. Not good. Alright, so... Immortal production, good. We got more Templar, that's nice. We still need some more Archons and Zealots, though. Because that's uh, a bit lackluster. Did he remax on Ultras? Yes, he did. No, that's, that's nice. Makes our life easier. Still need more Zealots. There we go. Very nice. Uh, still more Archons, though. We only have two. We definitely need more than that. Um, I feel like that's way too many. That's way too many High Templar. Holy crap. This could be at least, like, three more Archons. We really only need, like, four to six High Templar for Storm. Um, and the rest can be Archons. So right now that's just like, way, that's so overkill. Since there's no, like, this is different from PVT, because PVT, there's feedback, I mean not feedback, uh, EMP. So having a, just like a, like a ridiculously high amount of High Templar can sometimes be good in that regard. So that way, even no matter how many EMPs he casts, you'll still have some Storms left and a lot of Archons afterwards. But that's not the case in PvZ, so you can you can usually get all your storms off uh, with a small amount of units, a small amount of High Templar. 
So this is kind of overkill. Need more Archons. Alright, so we got this battle coming up now. His army is bigger than ours because we have way too many pros. We have about 10 more than we need at this point. And he's actually got very low drones and very low bases too, in fact. Um, that could have actually easily been harassed. Um, now that I think about that, like right after that attack, you could have like sent a small group of zealots over to deny a base up here or down here. Well, we saw there was nothing here, so you can just go right up here. Um, and then obviously that thing with like the war prism, like obviously like combining two kind of different attacks, like attack, like a drop there and then poke up, poke up and then do a drop. That kind of stuff is always good. Alright, so these storms look absolutely awesome. And they are. However, we're running, we're running ourselves into a corner here, which is terrible against ultralisks. So everything but the ultralisks are dead at this point for the most part. These lanes will die soon after. Yeah. Um, and then we 1A and get stuck. Um, yeah, not the best unit management. How many warp gates do we have? It definitely doesn't look like a lot. That's kind of a meh amount. We definitely could have at least 16 right now. Um, that would be optimal. Um, yeah, that battle is just really weird. Like, the storms were good, but then the follow-up was really poorly done, I think. Because every, cause everything got caught. Like, there's so many units not attacking right now. Or during that entire engagement. And everything was just, like, clumped up so easily for all those Ultralisks to just do complete splash the entire time. So that got absolutely wrecked. Um, and then the Immortals died really quickly in the beginning as well. Which was bad. Alright. So, we got some more stuff coming in. Can't really engage this yet. And we look pretty dead, to be honest. Um, once once they get like this critical amount of ultras, um, and your army just gets rolled by it once, usually it might be kind of... And you don't have like an adequate uh, gateway count to quickly reinforce, then you're kind of screwed. It's also bad that it, the trait that the army or the engagement happened at your side of the base instead of at his side of the base, so it could have given you a little bit of more time to get some more units out. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're dead from here on out. Um, so this game... I would say after the after the initial hold from the Baneling bus, which was good, and the quick third base, which was also good... Um, oh, that Archon's like tiny, that's so funny. Um, other than that, I think the key points here are unit control. Uh, we need to make sure to use the, get the most out of our units, so, you know, keeping the Blink Stalkers away, having the Zealots and, and Archons take the front of the damage, and then having the Archon, or the, uh, Immortals, uh, focus the Immortals, I <laughs> mean, fucking, oh my god, I can't talk today. The Immortals focus the Ultras. and then storm and force field before then, so that way we can keep as many units away from us as possible, um, and then not get backed up into a corner, obviously. And then just, like, coordinate drops with other uh, forms of harassment, because dealing with, because, like, one drop at a time, or one attack at a time is pretty easy to deal with. Um, it's not really that complicating or uh, multitasking uh, taxing, but doing two at, two at a time really makes them do some quick decisions about exactly how to split up split up their army and whatnot. So it really catches a lot of people off guard. So try to incorporate incorporate that a little bit more when you try your drops and whatnot. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, you did all right. Just get that, do that micro. Um, so yeah, that'll pretty much be it.